Hello humans and superior shave fans and greater species of Earth. Uh, in this video, I want to come back to that damn boker that I've been talking about in all those previous videos to show you how I am attacking its uh, resistance in allowing its bevel to be established. So here we have the show side and um, it looks pretty damn good. I hope I got the lights good on this one. Uh, can you see that bubble? Let's see if I can make this nice and close up here. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Now we're getting a good look at that bevel width as I am looking through this electronic viewfinder with a large format camera attached to the front because I need the front tilt. But uh, you can see that bevel plane looks quite solid on the front there. On the back of the stam razor, though, it's never quite getting there. And uh, let's see if I can. Alrighty. But I've made a lot of progress. Um, look, the width is really, really close. It just needs to get a few scraps of a millimeters wider down there. But the, the width that I'd want all the way to here is, is creeped up all the way this way. And so I want to show you when you have a razor that the bevel plane is the widest in the middle and is not long enough over here and here. And the razor is the same width itself, relatively speaking, from the center to the edge. It's okay for less bevel plane to be showing when the heel and the toe of the razor are worn. Because if you think about it, there's a plane, and then if the metal is curving this way and this way, there would just be less of the bevel plane to be appearing within the same plane. But when the width of the razor, as on this razor, is healthy, see, wind up with my little graph here, it's pretty healthy as far as width, but the bevel appearance of the width that's showing there is uh, not good then you got to work on that thing until it gets there. So down here, to get from here to here, I'm pretty much throwing in the towel. But I'm damn sure going to shave with this effing razor. And uh, all I need to do is get that a little bit longer, and uh, then I can go refine it. And now I'm going to show you the way that I've been making progress with this damn razor. So, what do you see here? I got me a little slurry stone. And uh, I flattened this thing which I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend for making slurry, but for using as a little tiny hone. Works pretty good. Now, I'm sure you could just get a giant 4 by 10 inch hone and only do like this, uh, as far as for the fixing the toe of the razor. For me, it works better going like that. These, these little pieces I find easier to fix toes than working on the bench stone with just the toe of the razor. Don't ask me why. Making progress! Making progress! It's so close. It just needs a little bit of work over there. Take my little baby slurry stone here. To be alone with you. Every now and again, I'll kind of go this direction so that I don't uh, make the division line of when you are working on this little slurry stone. Son of a bitch, rap bastard, stupid fucking phone. You don't want to bend too much. You don't want to put too much torque in because then you'll actually flex the razor edge and uh, cause a geometric change to what you're grinding in. Uh, 
Okay, here we are. Since the beginning of the video, I'm pretty sure this little wider part got a little bit more in that direction. I do see a little bit of shuffling versus the nice uniform stuff on the bigger bench stone from over here, but you just got to get this part cut in, and then once it's all cut in, then you can go work on the 40 millimeter wide, wide stone, and uh, it wouldn't be no problem. So close. I'll be shaving with this mutter effort today.